What's up, buddy? How you been? Today, we're going to talk about how I turned this little plastic army man from BMC Toys into this fun little diorama uh, involving this scratch-built drone. I think it turned out pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, let me show you how I did it. All right, I'm excited to dive in with you. This is the Marine I chose from the BMC Toys United States Marine Kit. It says Iwo Jima on the package. Uh, I started by priming the, mar the Marine black with a standard black primer for plastics. Uh, and then I dry brushed uniform gray over top of that. In a second here, you'll see me mix in a little bit of white and then go over it again. Uh, one of the things you don't get a sense for in this actual video is the drying time, but there was a, a substantial amount in there to let things dry. Uh, so once that was set and dried, I went in and added army green by the army painter over all of the, the different cloths and hat that I thought would be appropriate in that color. Army green is really fantastic. It is a little thin, so it does take multiple coats, and you'll see me do several throughout the video. Uh, I'll call them out when I see them. But yeah, I started with the head. You can kind of see me just pulling down on everything from the top, working top down, uh, speeding this up a little bit, just to show you, sort of show you the, the initial coverage. It was very thin, um, and it, it rubbed off pretty easily. It took several coats, I'd say at least three. Uh, coming back in and, and you know hitting it from the top down again so covering the pants making sure everything was filled in was really important then going in with uh, Mornfang Brown was the next step to sort of cover all of the the wood bits and the satchels and the straps And then you'll see me actually mix in the Mornfang brown with bits of the army painter green to create a, like a, a subdued look between the two. And I used that on the backpack. And as I uh, went in and did more layers, the backpack got lighter and lighter over each application. Here I'm using Grimoire Purple. I'm going to lay that down as a base for all the skin tones. And then I'm going to go in and mix that up with a little bit of Barbarian Flesh. Do about a one-to-one -one mix and then cover it up. The face on these figures, just in general, I'm not the best with faces. I don't spend enough time with them. Um, with these plastic army men, I tend to spend even less time with them due to the nature of the sculpts being so poor. So you'll see me again go through here uh, and, and make multiple passes at it to try and make it look passable. And a really fun fact about this is I had left this project go for a day and my two-year-old son got in there and uh, was playing with the toy and totally busted up his face. So he got kind of smashed. But, you know, I didn't get too upset. I actually didn't get upset at all. I just decided it was time to get back in there and fix it up again. So a little bit more Grimoire Purple, a little bit more of a mix of Barbarian Flesh. And you'll see me, uh, actually, I'm going to bring in my, my 2X specs here so I can get in there and do a little bit better job on the face. The first pass I wasn't super happy with, but we got there. Here I've slowed down the footage a little bit so you can see my stippling technique. Uh, this is the best way to build up layers in my opinion rather than to pull, to use very small dots and to, to blend very gingerly throughout the process to not have too much paint applied all at once. But I I don't know what happened exactly. I guess I got impatient at one point and I ended up going a little too heavy so you can see I have a, a more uniform coating here on his face towards the end of that so I go back in and fix it a little bit but overall I don't fuss too much on the face due to the nature of the model and my focus on the larger diorama here I am lightening up that backpack again and this is this is probably the the best I've gotten him um, I do go in and add some highlights but here you can see the one-to-one -one comparison between the original and the painted version very simple very clean uh, and it's perfect for for what we're going to be using it for so then I went in and did my best with the pupils. I didn't spend too much time on this. I didn't think the, the effort was worth it, but I did add pupils and then I, so I added the whites of the eyes and the pupils and then I even tried to do a little highlight, but I didn't want to overwork the eyes. So I just left them as they were and called it done. So the, uh, the final things to do here were to touch up everything with another coat, add in some white, and then I went in and did some freehanding. I added a spade design to the side. 
And then on the other side, I'm actually going to freehand the word ace, which I apologize isn't the in frame in the best it could have been. This is still very much a learning experience. Sometimes I think I'm in frame and then it turns out I'm over t two or three inches too far and it completely offsets the, the entire video. Uh, jumping ahead here, here I am making a few more, a few more cleanups to some of the details before I then uh, ditch this wet palette paper because it has served me well this project and a few others. So the next thing is to start looking for the drone pieces that I want to build. I had a cap from a yogurt pouch that my son used to eat. So that's what that red tech cap is there and you'll see me pull that up. And I had a bunch of different odds and ends laying around from collecting toys and from just holding on to all my toys from childhood. So I pulled out some of the things I thought would look the best and work the best in the project. Uh, it included these machine guns. Uh, I thought that the drone should be feel of this world but of some sort of a futuristic tech at the same time. So here there are some backpacks of, from my core uh, G.I. Joes and I don't know what these are from but they, they look like lasers to me. Um, and additionally I had these toothpicks that I thought would make perfect laser beams due to their transparency. You just paint them up red. I also had this weird shield design, some inspiration for maybe a color palette and that's me playing with the bottle cap for the pouch, the pouch cap. And it just so happened that these guns fit into the size of the pouch, the screw perfectly. It was really sudden definite. And the fact that that shield or whatever that thing was fit on top was also really fortunate. Um, so the pieces just sort of fell into place. Uh, but I did have to then, you know, go in and make it work for real. And that involved planning. Uh, I had done a lot of planning off camera because I didn't want to waste a bunch of time as I was fiddling this out, but it actually didn't take me too long to figure out the pieces. I had this uh, perfect symmetry that I was going to achieve with having like pieces, which was awesome. Decided on using lasers rather than the, those machine guns. I had some wires pulled out in case maybe I wanted to make it feel a little bit more exposed, but ultimately I decided to make it look like this nice contained uh, self-hovering drone. In this next shot, you'll see me with my candlestick. This became the base of my my diorama. I put it flat on some cork and traced around it so that could be my base. I experimented with using several layers of cork, but ultimately decided just to use one. And uh, here is the finished drone. I didn't get great shots of it before I started working on the actual diorama base because I was in a rush and, and had to make some concessions on what I would shoot and film. But overall, this is it after it's been spray painted with uh, like a dark gray from Vallejo. I think it's called Panzer Gray. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is you know, figure out where it's gonna go and how it's gonna actually hover behind the soldier it's chasing on the base. I had this, this uh, metal wiring that's wrapped in green uh, plastic it's, it's part of a vine and I sort of spun I had it spun around on something before and I kind of liked the shape of it I thought it looked like uh, spiraling smoke so this is my first attempt at ever really trying anything like this but I ended up sliding it underneath the cork between the cork and the top of the the candlestick and it just stayed there really well it's a it's about two inches underneath there uh, I wish I had gotten a better shot of what it looked like before I did this, but essentially I sprayed painted that white. While I, why I did it this way, I don't know exactly, but I put it in there and then spray painted it white. So I actually got white a little bit on the, the cork there and along the base, which I go in and clean up later. I should have just spray painted it white and then stuck it in there. But um, I had these ideas and I was trying to move quickly and I just wasn't using logic 100% of the time. But here I am wrapping the cotton balls around the the wire and the wire actually had these little nubs sticking out so it, it stuck to it pretty well but then i also went and added pv 
PVA glue and extra layers. Um, and then here I am painting up the drone. So that dark gray looked pretty good, um, but as you can see, it needed some, some weathering and a, some texture effects to really make it feel like it was of the era, but also feeling maybe alien. Um, the story is certainly up to interpretation at this point, but I had some ideas that maybe I will explore later in future videos. Uh, here I'm using thick mud to sort of cake and icing the cake on and icing the the base of the diorama. I actually just put the character, the, the the toy soldier, right into the base and covered him up with the mud, and that was all I needed for adhesive, um, making sure to get all the edges patted down nice. It was actually very therapeutic, like icing a cake. And the next thing I did was added a bunch of tufts from a couple different gaming companies. I'll put links in the description as well as cork bark which is like this thick dark bark that makes a mess when you break it apart but it has a really great natural look to it so i wanted something that felt very alive but muddy and war-torn almost so you'll see here in a second the next like the look at it so i've got my first look my second look this is like me feeling out does it, does it feel right the next thing to do is you know go in and add the lasers and the, the further details so i had glued the toothpicks I showed in the beginning to the individual piece, the individual guns, and they were serving as my lasers. At first I liked the yellow, but I had uh, experience with Army Painter's Blood Red on, on other plastics, and I thought it would tint it just the right color red and the shade red, and it really did. It looks nice. I also cut the toothpicks down into halves, and I'm using the other halves as lasers in the ground, like the drone had shot and missed its first shot but you can see from the angle in the diorama that it's pretty locked on with these its final shot and it looked like he might he might actually get him so you can see here he's pretty much dead to rights with this angle the next thing you know just to keep moving on it was to try and find that perfect angle make sure it would stick to the base and not waddle around too much or fall off um, so I ended up actually sort of snapping the wire into that the bottom of the drone and it stays really well secured. It's not glued. If I need to take it off, it's easy to take off. Here I'm, I'm actually drawing out the initials of my business, which is damn good brand. So DGB, but I'm making them look a little bit more alien and foreign. So here I am taking that design and freehanding it onto the drone. So I did a little bit of quick eyeballing and it goes DGB all around the side and yeah, just a nice slow shot here of the, uh, the freehanding. I find this very relaxing to do this freehanding. I'm not the best at it, but painting it is like my favorite part. Like getting to this stage was so satisfying uh, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I think more battle damage is always good and uh, fun, but there's certain things about the way that the drone came together that it feels very time-worn and I just thought that was really naturally very cool. So next I'm taking this Molina cup, uh, these cookie cups that I have. I actually use them a lot for my speed painting paints because they run all over and I'm cutting very thin strips and what I'm going to do is cover those in Vallejo thick mud and then put those in like an arching explosion type design uh, where the one laser is landing. And the reason I'm doing to this one, not the other one, is because the other one actually shoots into rock. So this one, it's meant to look like it's actually shooting into the mud and exploding a little bit out. Um, this was an idea that my buddy Pat suggested. I thought it would be cool. I didn't really know how to do it, but he had just suggested I use thin pieces of plastic. Um, I could have gone with like clear plastic and then just mud at the tip so it looked like it had blown up, but I thought that this looked a little bit swampier and wetter, so it kind of made sense to have the entire thing look like it was bursting with, with mud. And in just a second here, we'll take a look at the final result. Hope you enjoy it. 